today we'll discuss about uh, listeriosis listeriosis is a very uh, common disease which is mainly present uh, when we observe the symptom in the small ruminant uh, mainly sheep goats and sometimes also in cattles we will observe the symptom and uh, this is a, a circling disease so we will observe the uh, symptom that animal is moving or dropping their head to one side and and it's like uh, his uh, uh, move in the circle so that's why it is known as a circling disease so this is the common uh, this is a very important disease or common disease you can say in the animals but this uh, disease can also transmit to the human being so that's why listeriosis is uh, uh, genotic disease so uh, very commonly this disease is known as a circling disease silage sickness because the improper preparation of the silage or ph of the silage that organism listeria monocytogen can grow and by this uh, by uh, consumption of this silage uh, him, uh, animal can get the infection so this is also known as the silage sickness this is also known as the bacterial caprine bacterial encephalitis because it will produce some uh, symptoms like encephalitis and affect the cns listerial abortion because uh, the main symptoms uh, in animals and also in the human uh, you will observe the abortion in the late trimester so this is known as the listerial abortion because i to says because uh, it uh, affect the endothelial uh, cells or uh, you can say reticular reticular endothelial cells so the, because this is the facultative intracellular parasite so this is also known as the leukocytosis this, this is also known as the listeria listeria losis so these are some uh, common name or synonyms uh, of the listeriosis listeriosis is uh, caused by the uh, genus listeria and uh, there are various uh, species is there but uh, out of this uh, only two of them like listeria monocytogen and listeria evanoi are uh, pathogenic in nature out of which the listeria monocytogen is of genotic importance because it can transmit the infection from uh, human to uh, uh, sorry animal to human or sometimes nosocomial infection is also noticed so it can also transmit from one infant to another infant or another one person to another person in the uh, hospital settings so uh, uh, the listeria monocytogen is very very important uh, in sometimes uh, in animals listeria evanoi causes the uh, symptoms like abortion in the sheep uh, and goats so the, both are pathogenic but we'll mostly discuss about the listeria monocytogen so this these are small rods and uh, gram positive organism it is a non spore forming organism Uh, facultative anaerobic and size you can see varies between one to two micron to zero point five micron. Already I discussed this is facultative intracellular parasite and it mainly affects the reticular endothelial cells. The optimum temperature you will also is uh, is between the three to um, forty five degrees Celsius. But optimum or most commonly it can grow between the thirty to forty you seven know, degrees Celsius temperature. it is motile in the specific temperature you can say uh, between the 20 to 25 degree celsius temperature it, it shows the tumbling motility as you can see in the pictures like uh, this type of motility it can uh, uh, sh show between the 20 to 25 degree celsius temperature that motility is specifically known as the tumbling motility just like in the uh, uh, listeria uh, leptospirosis it was the cork cork is too like motility so here uh, this is the tumbling motility which is also uh, you observe in the specific temperature in the listeria monocytogen and uh, when you see uh, the ph you know, the uh, specific ph uh, in which the organism can grow between the 6 to 9 so uh, in uh, listeria monocytogen uh, 11 serotypes are there uh, out of which half a half b and 4b uh, this these are the name of serotype which is observed or isolated from the various animal and human species means this three serotypes of the listeria monocytogen is very uh, uh, pathogenic or we can say uh, the widespread or most commonly involved species in the animal and human diseases so this uh, species uh, this serotypes are very very uh, important 
okay when you talk about the epidemiology this organism is uh, ubiquitous in nature and it, you can isolate the listeria uh, from uh, more various environment sources like uh, in the water, in the sewage, and uh, it also um, can say the human intestine or animal intestine is the reservoir of this listeria. So uh, you can also isolate this organism from various um, sources like uh, digging vegetation, uh, sewage, sludges, factory effluent, river waters. Means uh, everywhere in from the environment, soil, vegetation, you can isolate the uh, this particular organism okay so here also just like this uh, is uh, ubiquitous in nature the um, host range is also very wide it, uh, it found in the 40 mammalian species 20 birds species in crustaceans ticks or fishes and also in various wild animals poultry uh, rodents this uh, and, uh, organism is uh, present and you can isolate uh, the organism, this monocytation. In domestic animals, mainly uh, you can say three uh, animal species, sheep, goat and calves uh, or uh, boys, this uh, cause the disease. These are the uh, very common uh, animal species which is affected by the uh, listeria monocytation. So the wide, host range is also very wide uh, and for the uh, listeria monocytation. When you talk about the sources, how it is, uh, uh, how animal and uh, human can get the infection. So, uh, as this uh, is widely distributed in the nature, so main source, uh, there are many sources uh, for the infection in human as well as in animals. So, you can say uh, the specific source uh, is uh, just like we discussed, it is also known as the silage sickness. So, main source you can say, uh, or a very important source is the silage. During the preparation of silage, the specific pH is required. If, if uh, the silage uh, couldn't attain that pH, then this organism uh, get chance and grow. So in that case, uh, through the um, in ingestion of the contaminated silage, it can, the animal can get the infection. So this is the main route. Otherwise, through the various vegetation, through the water, infected water, it can also uh, gain uh, get entry inside the animal body. So this is the main route, uh, uh, route uh, when you talk about the route, that is the ingestion through the ingestion of oral route. And source, you can see the silage. Uh, so uh, when it uh, enters inside the body um, of the animals, in a female animal, the uh, organism can excrete through the various uh, uh, various uh, secretion or excretion you can say in the feces or in the urine and also through the milk in the female animal the milk contains approximately one ten to power three cells per liter so uh, the organism can be excreted in the milk and uh, that's why it contaminates and vomit and uh, if uh, the milk product is prepared from uh, that milk that milk product is also contaminated so uh, this is the source for animal animals, how animals can get the infection and how it uh, can uh, transmit uh, to the environment or uh, excrete in the environment through the saliva, through the uh, feces or through the milk. Uh, it can transmit to other animals or human also or it uh, contaminate the environment. So this is the source and transmission uh, from animal and to the animals. Uh, when you talk about Human, as I told, there are various routes for uh, uh, animals. Similarly, uh, human can also get infection from uh, various routes. But uh, the foodborne route, when you talk about and uh, when you think uh, uh, from genetic aspect, that is the foodborne transmission is very important. So con consumption of the milk uh, of the infected animal or milk product prepared from that infected milk is the main source for human. However, the, uh, it can transmit from uh, infected mother to the fetus or uh, during the care or handling of the 
न्यू बॉर्न कॉज और हैंडलिंग ऑफ द अबॉर्शन केसेस द ह्यूमन कैन गेट द इन्फेक्शन फ्रॉम द इन्फेक्टेड एनिमल्स सो अदर रूट ऑल्सो इज देयर दैट इज नोजोकोमल इन्फेक्शन फ्रॉम वन पर्सन टू अनदर पर्सन स्प्रेड नॉट डायरेक्टली बट मे बी टू द कंटामिनेटेड फीट प्रोडक्ट कंटामिनेटेड हैंड्स सो दिस इज दिस आर सम अदर रूट्स बट यू कैन से द फूड बोर्न ट्रांसमिशन फ्रॉम एनिमल टू ह्यूमन is the main root a prominent main by which the infection can transmit so these are the some uh, roots or sources uh, for the human being how uh, listeria gain access inside the human body so when we talk about disease so uh, there are various uh, range or severity of the disease may vary from mild symptomatic infection to the uh, symptomatic infection in which may be hyper acute or acute so uh, when you talk about different species mainly three species in animal will consider so uh, the ships are more susceptible most susceptible species there are two boats and followed by cattle so this this is the uh, range of susceptibility means the ships are highly susceptible or or you can say in ship and boat the disease present in hyper acute form after just after the onset of symptom Uh, the animal uh, may die early, very fast. So uh, the susceptibility is very high. So mainly uh, it causes the septicemia, or uh, or it affects the CNS, or it causes the abortion. You can categorize the uh, disease of listeriosis in animals in three categories. It leads to septicemia, or uh, it affects the CNS. In, uh, Causes the paralysis and leads to the fetal movement. Third one is the abortion. Uh, abortion may lead to uh, late pregnancy. And uh, in human or uh, in uh, cattle also, uh, it causes not only cattle in sheep and goat it also leads to the mastitis. So uh, there are some uh, symptoms when you talk about uh, incubation period. It may vary between uh, two to three days in case of uh, sheep and goat. Means it is early. as compared to cattle yeah, cattle the incubation period is 2 to 6 weeks so uh, it will lead to uh, circling disease means urinary paralysis or facial paralysis it, it it means there is a drooping of the head towards one side and uh, because of the paralysis you will see uh, the the uh, eyelids uh, will drop to the one side and uh, continuous there is a continuous drooping of the saliva so an animal move in the circle so this is the circling disease mainly uh, you will observe in uh, small ruminant uh, or also in the bovines and uh, it uh, this it causes a mastitis mastitis uh, may be uh, either it may be sub acute acute or chronic type of mastitis any kind of mastitis based on the severity it can uh, cause the mastitis in animals and uh, it causes the um, pyrexia and profuse diarrhea this is because of the septicemia and later on in late trimester uh, it causes the uh, abortion so these are the some symptoms in sheep goats and cattle similarly in the swine it also affect the cns or cause the meningoencephalitis and also it shows the symptom of dyspnea cough and abortion in uh, uh, birds it, the disease may be sporadic or episodic type maybe uh, sometimes it may be acute or chronic means it varies but uh, it will you can categorize that it may lead to the septicemia or necrosis um, or it affects some cms so more or less the uh, disease uh, type of the symptoms will be uh, same but the severity may vary In in some species, uh, the particular symptom uh, may be uh, present in the high. Uh, means, uh, based on uh, the severity of the particular species, you will observe the symptoms. In some times, uh, just like in sheep and goats, the severity is uh, very high as compared to other animal species. So uh, uh, the uh, root, you can say, or the pathogenesis of the listeriosis uh, or listeria is the same. But the symptom may vary. Um, in the cv in the form of cvrt so oh, uh, these are the some uh, symptoms uh, in animals uh, and in human uh, you will observe the symptoms uh, mainly uh, the abortion 
in the uh, pregnant woman and maybe it absorbs in the uh, third world trimester. So uh, there are some uh, group which is more susceptible, the infants who is, uh, or you can say the, uh, the children who is less than the five years of age or the elder who is more than 50 years of age are more susceptible. The pregnant women are more susceptible uh, or the immunocompromised person uh, which belongs to uh, which suffering from various uh, metabolic diseases or uh, some uh, immuno uh, uh, deficient diseases. So they are more susceptible uh, as compared to other groups. So in uh, human, uh, the abortion is the main uh, symptom. And uh, after, uh, if, if uh, the, you know, also in animals, if the, the woman or the animal is affected in the last trimester of their pregnancy, so in that case, if uh, uh, they, um, there is a no other uh, abortion or miscarriage type of symptom is there, but still uh, the, uh, it will, the, uh, the fetus or the, you can say the newborn, the newborn will show the, some symptoms of, um, uh, just like in infant, it will show the some symptoms of the specific term is there, that is granulomotus majus infanticepticum. So this, uh, this type of symptom you observe means this specific symptom is the, uh, you will observe the uh, granulomotus uh, rashes or special type of rashes, rashes all over the body of the infant. And uh, uh, it will uh, mainly, uh, you'll observe the respiratory disorder other than the fever, lethargy, vomition. Uh, other than this, you'll observe the either uh, you'll observe the special, special typical type of rashes all over the body, uh, like uh, the disseminated granulomatosis, means some tumor like rashes you'll observe. So, uh, or you can observe the respiratory tract disorder. So, after uh, the delivery, uh, if, uh, means, uh, if the woman uh, in, uh, is uh, infected, during the last trimester, trimester, you can observe some such type of the symptom in, in the uh, infant, uh, in the newborn. So in, uh, after uh, the parturition, it it will uh, the fetus or infant, the fetus infant will show some some, some type of the symptoms. So if uh, at the time of delivery, uh, female uh, does not show any symptom, still it excretes the organism. Uh, through the vagina, cervix, for the few days to several weeks. So it act, the women or uh, the female animal act as a carrier uh, for the uh, excretion of uh, carrier for the particular uh, organism. It excretes the organism uh, from few days to week. Uh, and in adults, you will observe the symptom of uh, serious symptom, uh, meningoencephalitis, meningitis type of symptom you will observe. So these are the some symptoms. Mainly, you will observe the symptom of abortion. Otherwise, uh, in infant, uh, you will observe the respiratory tract disorder and disseminated granulomatosis. And if a woman does not showing any type of symptom, or uh, act as a carrier uh, for the uh, organism and excrete the organism uh, to vaginal cervix. These are the some symptoms uh, you will observe in human beings. Now come to the diagnosis. How we will diagnose? So based on, uh, on the clinical signs and symptoms, you can observe or uh, you can observe you can take a history of the uh, silage, uh, back silage or environment. You can collect the sample from the environment and you can observe if uh, uh, it may be, uh, it could be a disease of uh, listeriosis due to the listeria monocytogen. But other method or other laboratory test is there for the information. Like uh, you can demonstrate the organism in this near. So for that, you can go for the staining. Either you can use the gram staining of peroxide identity peroxide method of staining or the fat test. So you can observe the organism directly from the various uh, sources or samples. Next, you can isolate the sample. I, there are various media is there. Uh, by which you can uh, isolate the organism in the uh, solid media in the agar plate. So these are the some uh, other method by which you can isolate the organism or you can uh, confirm the organism or infection. 
so you can take uh, any of the sample you can take the blood or csf plutonium or uh, newborn or aborted fetus you can say you can say, take the vaginal swab or secretion you can take the feed stuff food stuff feces uh, any type of symptom you can take and you can go for the two step enrichment and after the selective plating either in the palcom or drea these are the some media the solid media by which you can uh, isolate the organism so you can go for the isolation of the pathogen for the confirmation confirmatory test so there are some test pathogenicity pathogenicity testing uh, this is uh, you can dif this is used to differentiate uh, pathogenic listeria with the non pathogenic listeria our aim is to isolate or identify the pathogenic listeria that is listeria monocytogen so there are various method of the pathogenicity testing by which you can differentiate between the non pathogenic or pathogenic or non listeria organism so uh, this is the one method pipc uh, by which you can this is in vitro method by uh, observing the colony colony characteristic you can uh, differentiate the different samples here you see some are uh, green in color with, with the zone of halo they are uh, the, the colonies with the green in color and zone of halo are the pathogenic in nature the colonies which is without zone of halo green color colonies without zone of halo that is the non pathogenic listeria or there are colonies which is having white color colony you can say that is the non listeria organism so by with, by this uh, by uh, observing the colony characteristic you can uh, differentiate the different listeria organism similarly uh, that was the in vitro method and here uh, you can use the in vivo method also so uh, by uh, here you can see uh, you can take the mice or you can take the chick embryo uh, inoculation through the cam root or so the uh, you can one uh, one larvae is there galeria malonerativa do not uh, don't don't uh, don't stress stress that much but just to remember you can take different in vivo uh, uh, organ uh, animals or uh, non mammalian model of to identify the uh, pathogenicity or virulence of the listeria okay so uh, most commonly you, in laboratory uh, they are using that is mice or uh, chicken chicken embryo uh, but uh, sometimes uh, nowadays uh, very popularly non mammalian model is also in use like larvae of the galeria malonella this is the uh, it also wax moth one type of moth is there uh, so their larvae is used in the uh, experiment nowadays very important or name test is the entols test so this is the do you have to um, inoculate the suspected sample in the uh, eye leads of the um, uh, rabbit and after um, 24 hours you will observe the 24 i think so 48 hours you will observe the symptom of keratoconjunctivitis so in the positive case you will observe the keratoconjunctivitis uh, in the uh, rabbit eye of the rabbit so if Uh, this is the Anton's test. Very important or name. Then uh, the name. All the name tests are very very uh, important. So this is also a name test. Uh, uh, this is also very important. Let's try to remember. Anton's test is a correcto conjunctivity te test used in the um, rabbit. And what you will observe that is you have to observe the. Uh, uh, conjunctivitis in the eye after uh, 48 hours of inoculation other than this uh, you can uh, go for the various test serological test or the molecular test so there are various kit is also there uh, or uh, you, know, you can uh, observe the uh, organism uh, by the um, molecular method like pcr by uh, Gen not only genus species, species level so there are various uh, tests is there already standardized is, uh, test uh, kits are available so this is uh, easy however uh, in some tests like uh, serum agglutination test and vidal test shows some cross reactivity with the other organism like staphylococcus aureus so uh, so 
PCR or you can say ELISA are more uh, sensitive tests or specific tests as compared to normal agglutination or uh, agglutination test, lipidial test. So this, these tests are very specific and most importantly that uh, isolation of organism is very, very uh, specific test. Uh, you can go for the uh, isolation of organism or either you can go for the ELISA or PCR. So treatment, uh, the ampicillin is dropped up twice in case of encephalitis or in, 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 in immunocompromised person, you can also use the gentamicin along with the ampicillin. And in case of conjunctivitis or iitis, uh, you can use the corticosteride along with the antibiotics. So these are the uh, some drug for the treatment and come to the prevention control. So, um, Prevention and control already we know how it is transmitted. So the care should be taken during the silage preparation, culling of the infected animal, disinfection of the floor. These are all the um, common practice by which you can control the infection animals. And in human, uh, all the main route is the foodborne infection. So the care uh, should be taken that we should not uh, uh, either we should not use the milk of the infected animals or if you are using uh, unknowingly then already always you have to use the pasteurized milk and product uh, from the uh, pasteurized milk prepared from the uh, pasteurized milk so other uh, to avoid other uh, route we have to uh, take care during the handling uh, of the animals uh, aborted cases or uh, infected materials so these are all the uh, precautions you can take. Uh, however, there is no immunization uh, is available uh, for uh, this widespread, there is no vaccine is there uh, for the immunization in animals. But in some uh, local uh, cases or in countries, they are using uh, some live attenuated vaccine based on the uh, half A or 4B serotypes of the listed immunosatogen. So only uh, the care uh, during the handling or consumption of the infected uh, milk or milk product by which you can prevent the infection in uh, humans. And in animals, we have to uh, 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 take care uh, or uh, you, can, you can say you can uh, take the various managemental practice by which uh, we can prevent uh, the disease or infection in the environment or to the other animal or also to the human being. These are the all uh, preventive and control point uh, for the listeria. So, any doubt 